And now, the most awaited presentation because it is absolutely related to you. It is, I think it should be very close to your heart because it is about financial advisors. So we have Mr. Anuj Mehta, he's Vice President, Partner Success, One Finance, and he would be speaking on qualified financial advisors, the future of India. So a big round of applause for all the financial advisors. I know I'm sorry you will say since morning we are clapping only and it will pay off for sure. Uh, hi, good evening everybody. Uh, very sorry to be in between uh, the end of the day and all of y'all. I know all of y'all are eager to go back home on a Saturday, but uh, uh, I learned some words. So, uh, Shubho Shonda, uh, good evening. Apologies for wrong pronunciations, but uh, very fond of the culture, uh, you know, people, food here in Calcutta. Uh, we came in last night and we really were hoping we could catch up on some puchkas, but we got late, so very bad luck. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to talk about uh, how qualified financial advisors are going to be the need in India in the next 10 years. I think a lot of speakers uh, here today have spoken about a lot of things such as mutual fund sahi hai, but advisor bhi zaruri hai. Uh, about how in just the previous presentation we were talking about the Indian demographic in India and the way it's shaping up and how in the next 10 years, majority of the Indian population is going to belong to the middle net worth income group. Uh, so we've clearly established the demand. Uh, we've clearly established the need. I'm just going to be talking about certain challenges that we face today and how One Finance is trying and coping up and trying and providing a solution to all these problems so that we, we come up brighter and stronger. I think every evolution sees a lot of parameters, a lot of reasonings based on which we see radical evol evolutions. If you look at the consumers in India and the basis on which they trust, you see in the last about 30, 40 years, the parameters have changed. The pre-liberalization, privatization, globalization, right? The 1960s, 70s and 80s era, people were majorly dependent on government entities for trust you know if you are anything that is related to the government there's trust otherwise people find it difficult to trust and then in the 1990s liberalization privatization globalizations happened a lot of international brands started coming into india private brands started flourishing in india and hence the trust evolved from not just government backed uh, you know nationalized entities but also private banks private institutions, private brands, you know, so these brands started creating trust amongst people. And then in the era of 2000s, we started seeing technology coming into picture. And slowly and gradually, the, the need for trust started moving towards privatization, tech and innovation. And we are here today in the 2020s era where obviously digitization, nationalization, liberalization, privatization, globalization is important for trust. But most importantly, due to the awareness that the consumers have today, transparency becomes the most important factor for a customer to trust any financial services provider in India. Because believe it or not, you people know this better than I do on the stage today that money is a very big taboo in India. People are not comfortable talking about money to other people. People are not comfortable trusting an, you know, an entirely unknown person when it comes to matters about money. And hence, transparency has become an extremely important uh, aspect and parameter for people to trust on the financial services provider. The point that I'm trying to make here is the more the regulatory compliance increases, the need for trust decreases. The relationship is inversely proportional, right? Um, and you can see that in the numbers here, taking a parallel, you know, uh, from the equity stock market, uh, DMAT, DMAT industry in India today, right? Uh, before PAN card became mandatory, there were literally just 54 lakh people who held an active DMAT account in India. The year PAN card was introduced, in just one year, that number doubled. You know, and then when it kept moving, we saw digitalization coming into picture. We saw Aadhaar card coming into picture, you know, becoming mandatory. And today, you know, the kind of DMAT account holders that we have in India. The point that I'm trying to make here is the more transparency, you know, higher regulations, higher honesty, higher honest focus towards offering of services helps you build your trust in financial services that the consumers want to opt for. So now that we've seen about how the industry is evolving, how do we see evolution in the coming years? 
a lot of different kinds of people who offer financial services in india today right we have product distributors people who are um, you know experts in ensuring that a product is delivered to the consumer there are product manufacturers there are advisory companies uh, but to stay relevant in this financial ecosystem we're going to see very clear changes and evolution in the coming 10 years relationship managers and private institutions you know will evolve into becoming qualified financial advisors who provide holistic financial well-being to customers uh, when you talk about uh, product distributors right there's either an online distribution or an offline distribution or regular or direct they're all going to bring into you know an omni channel distribution so there's going to be a clear distinction between companies who manufacture products um, individuals and corporations who distribute products and individuals and corporations who provide the right advisory on which a product can be distributed on we've also seen a lot of you know regulators under current for fee only based businesses in india obviously we've seen in the last couple of years mutual fund moving from regular to direct but we've also seen insurance aif pms moving into direct sort of arrangements by the regulator uh we've seen some changes where you know the commission transparencies has been increased in products uh upfront commissions have been you know removed and trail commissions are starting to reduce the point that i'm trying to make here is the stakeholders are seeing the future you know in advisory where a consumer is going to need a holistic approach towards enabling their financial well-being on a better direction on a better path and how are we trying to how are we trying to validate that well the numbers speaks for itself in the next 10 years more than 80% of indian population is going to belong to the middle net worth individual population this population is going to be a lot more aware they are going to be a lot more educated they will have money and they are going to need they are going to need assistance honest qualified advice on managing their finances and planning their financials for a better future right um uh, if you if you look at it purely from a numbers point of view there's going to be an addition of 140 million households in the middle income uh, group um one problem that we have today is that in the next 10 years 30 crore indians are going to see retirement uh, and that number is only going to increase beyond 30 years i just saw a tweet today uh, where it said that how how strong is retirement planning in india i mean travel to a country like a singapore and you'll see most of the public services you know like uh, people working at airports people working at uh, railway stations are majority senior citizen people we need a robust structure to ensure that the people who are retiring are financially capable of seeing through their retirement i mean what is the life expectancy today the kind of awareness that we have towards health how many of how many of you in this room are wearing smart watches how many of you in the room are counting the number of steps you take to, in a day the kind of water that you're drinking throughout the day the health awareness amongst people is highly increasing the advancement in medical science is increasing which means life expectancy is going to increase it's simply easy for us to say that oh i want to retire in the age of 40 i want to become financially independent and yet see double of that life beyond 40 and hence it becomes extremely important to plan for that uh, we're going to see 70% year on year growth in the asset holdings by these middle income households and uh, 60% of this population in india is going to belong to the age group of 20 to 50 which means this population is going to be extremely capable to do good work to do good businesses to make money to earn money and have the right intentions to invest to plan and become financially well off uh that is where we come into the picture uh i i i come from one finance one finance is a personal finance and an advisory organization we are focused on offering financial well-being solutions to the middle net worth individuals of india uh the idea is simple a promise is simple we promise our customers honest qualified and unbiased financial advisory that helps them improve financial well-being we are not a fintech company we are not a wealth management company uh we're simply focused on offering financial planning and advisory people who want honest advice people who want the right advice in an extremely hyper personalized manner that's who we are that's what we're trying to build and that's the problem we want to solve because Uh, when we started we conducted an extensive research study and the kind of you know outcomes that we had in the research majority problems in india faced by consumers today is that 
One, scattered finances. Majority of their finances are scattered across financial institutions. You may have multiple bank accounts, multiple credit cards, multiple DMAT accounts, right? So the problem is your money is scattered. The second problem is you have multiple people around you giving you financial advice, right? Your parents, your friends, your colleagues, you know, you may have a bank relationship manager, you may definitely have an advisor. The problem is not lack of advice. The problem is the lack of right and one clear, honest advice. So all of, the, all of these problems is not enabling the middle net worth individual today to come out of this and see a future where they can genuinely create wealth and get rid of their financial challenges. Globally, you know, after cheating, finance is the biggest reason for divorces amongst people, right? Because the kind of stress mismanagement and finances bring is, you know, real, it's reality. Uh, to meet that entire demand, we need a lot of qualified financial advisors in India. Now, the reality is, uh, if you look at the numbers in India, you know, uh, you look at any, any financial planning and advisory educational certificate like a CFP or a CWM, the kind of people who are holding active licenses is extremely less. Although the kind of efforts that AFM is putting in insur ensuring that people take up certificates like CWM is amazing. Uh, we need more and more people to come up with these certificates and taking and clearing them. Uh, if you look at the number of RIAs in India, we have less than 1500 people, you know, to be precise, somewhere close to, you know, 1250, 1270 people in India. Compare ourselves to a country like US, for one fourth of the population size in comparison, they have more than 90,000 people with active licenses for SPFP. They have more than 150,000 people holding licenses like CWM and, and you know, more than 15,000 people who are RIAs. I mean, financial planning in the US is as common as having a family doctor in India. A taxi driver in the US would have a financial planner because there's awareness in the country. You know, the other side of the problem is having people become aware about why financial planning is important in India. Um, that is the need we are addressing at One Finance uh, through qualified financial advisors. For us, a qualified financial advisor is an individual who understands the importance of financial planning, understands the importance of holistic financial planning and does not interchangeably understand that financial planning is investment planning. They take into account retirement planning, tax planning, estate and will planning, you know, liabilities management. Liability is such a big uh, need in India today. Access to credit cards, access to debt has become extremely easy. You could just buy, you know, an expensive smartphone on a six month zero cost EMI, right? But you don't realize the kind of impact that this debt could have on your overall financials. Liability, managers, uh, liability management is becoming extremely important. So an individual who understands the need for holistic financial planning, an individual who practices holistic financial planning and is certified with either of these certificates mentioned on the screen, right, becomes eligible to become a qualified financial advisor with One Finance. Uh, there may be people who at an independent capacity today are doing fee-based financial advisory services. Uh, why would I tell them to become a qualified financial advisor with One Finance? Because one, there's no stress of regulation or compliance because One Finance being a corporate RIA uh, gets into an agreement with the client directly as an RIA client. Uh, the arrangement between the qualified financial advisor and one finance is that of a consultant. Um, there's no need for bringing in clients, collecting financial aid. The biggest problem an advisor in this room sitting here faces today is what? Acquisition of clients. Because majority of the client acquisition in your business is through referrals. Now that has its own advantage and disadvantage, right? Advantage because once a client comes into you, uh, into your business, uh, and, and when you do good work for them, they will never leave you. You know, the lifetime value of that client is extremely high. Rather, they bring in 10 other clients. That's the advantage. Disadvantage, it becomes difficult to scale because if you are at 50 clients today, to have 5,000 clients is not easy. Second is operational challenges. Once you've got that client into your business, you may have an Excel sheet and a heavy Excel sheet that you would share with them, collect the entire financial data, manage, maintain, analyze, and then prepare a financial plan, right? And to prepare a financial plan, you may go into different platforms, multiple research platforms, try and see what product is working well for you, not working well for you, understand the client psychology requirements. So much goes on to it that it may take at least about two to three months for you to come up with a financial plan that would genuinely help the customer. And the same cycle repeats on an annual basis, right? 
through one finance QFA, all of these problems get solved because we bring in the clients, we collect their financial information, our quant labs prepares a financial plan structure. You know, all that you have to do is focus on the main skill set, which is financial planning and advisory. Uh, I would compare ourselves to a multi-speciality hospital where all of you all as qualified financial advisors becomes the specialist doctors who is a visiting doctor, right? We bring in the patient, we bring, you know, we build the infrastructure, we diagnose the problem. If uh, surgery is required, we admit them into the hospital, uh, into the operation theaters, the patient taken. We open the body, my team of doctors also prepare you for the operation. You just come in, do the most important part of the surgery, which is if it's a bypass, well, then maybe grafting if you're a heart specialist. Come in, do your work, and then you leave. You know, the next day you come back and review. Now with this, what happens is your time and energy that you put in is only restricted to the core skill set that you have, which is financial advisory, you know, the financial mindset that you have. And that enables you to create more and more impact in people's lives because profession of a financial advisor and that of a doctor is absolutely similar. What drives a doctor? The number of lives saved. What drives a financial advisor? The number of the lives made, you know, by helping people make the right financial choices. Uh, just a couple of numbers, we've, uh, we've started doing financial planning, onboarding financial advisors as partners. We're at about uh, more than 1200 crores value under advisory today, where uh, about 1100 crores is value under assets for our clients, uh, about 200 crores worth of liabilities under management, uh, advisory I mean. And we've had more than 30 uh, people who are qualified professionals who've partnered with us as qualified financial advisors from across the country. Uh, all of you all know this slide way better than I do. You people can validate this much better than I do. Obviously, you know, when you are a QFA, the best things that happens to you is you earn your clients' respects. There are relationships made with the client that lasts for beyond generations, right? Uh, obviously, it's an extremely high impact work, like I just mentioned about the doctor and, you know, the financial advisor profession. Uh, as, as an individual, you have the opportunity of an advisor to build a business, a legacy that can be passed on to your next generation. You know, your second generation can take up your business and cater to your clients' second generation. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of personal and professional growth. And I mean, no, no doubt there's good money in this profession, right? Uh, I think, yeah, that's what I had. Uh, I wanted to keep it short, simple, to the point. What is the problem? What are we trying to solve? Uh, we're available outside if there are any questions that you people have for us um, and I think I would just like to end on another thing that I learned and I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrongly but it says Abar Dekha Hobe, see you all soon Abar Dekha Hobe, thank you, sorry, thank you very much